gotta get those bra straps. What's up, baby dudes? I'm Angelica, and this is Wood Art Three Ways. We're gonna do it with power tools, then with only hand tools, and then with no tools at all. I'm also gonna answer some of the questions that you asked me on Instagram and explain what happened to my face in this picture. This intro is already exhausting. Let's get started. So we'll start out by doing a wood art project. You've probably seen these on Pinterest. Remove any stickers. You can also use a orbital sander to get the sticker residue off. Orbital sander, extremely useful tool. I would definitely recommend as one of your starter tools. If you wanna do a very symmetrical pattern, then find that middle point and go outwards. However, I'm gonna go more asymmetrical. I'm taking these thin boards to make the pattern. If there's any frayed edges, you can just sand those down. All my cuts for this will be made using a miter saw. This saw cuts very exact angles for mitered cuts and beveled cuts. We can set it to 45 degrees and get an exact 45 degree angle. Always read the instruction manual, always protect your eyes. Find where you wanna put your pieces. I used a little hand square to find that right angle. You can also keep them in place with a little piece of painter's tape. Here's the deal with right angles. It's gonna make the process go faster if you're working off 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles. Then it means that any piece you ever cut can always be matched up somewhere on the board. Does that make sense? I don't know. If you like these videos or you just feel like supporting me, hit the subscribe button. It helps to support the channel, which means I can put more time towards making videos for you guys. If there's some really big pieces that are in your way, you can just do what I'm doing, take a plank, draw a line, trim them all down so they're out of your way. You can also leave those rough edges and that's just a different look and that's pretty cool. Ba -ba -ba -ba, more tape, more planks. And then once I have a bunch of boards in place, I just put a piece of tape to kind of hold them together. To fit pieces between these two triangle shapes is a little trickier because you need to get that exact measurement. You can't have the overhang. So I just laid a piece down, tried to mark where I thought I needed to cut it, cut it on my miter saw. And then when you go to fit them in, if it doesn't fit quite exactly, I just sand it down with a sander until it fits. So I shared this photo of my face after I got a laser treatment done. Very interesting to see all the people who came out of the woodwork right away telling me about their laser, about their Botox, so many people. My favorite question about the laser though comes from my little sister's French exchange student who simply said, what this laser is for. I love you, Salome. What this laser is for. The laser is called the Resurfix laser. It is for acne scarring, large pores and fine lines and all that good stuff. My face is still healing, I have a lot of makeup on, which is why I'm not gonna get too close in this video. You don't need to see it. Once you have all your boards in place, I tape them all down in a chaotic fashion just to make sure they don't move, and then scoot them over to cut the edge off. This is my hand saw. It does not automatically cut in a straight line, so you can create a guide by laying down a plank, finding a 90 degree angle, and clamping it to the board. Then you use that as a guide and when you push your saw through, you know you're getting a straight cut. I sanded down any rough edges to make it look all sexy. Now I love this piece unpainted and this is personally how I would keep it. But if you want to paint, something I like to do is to do a color gradient, which is starting with a darker color and just making it lighter and lighter. I found these tiny little baby rollers, aren't they cute? I took one color, this like gray color, and then mixed in increasing amounts of white paint. Afterwards, I actually ended up making the top color black to make it pop a little more. Next question! What if I'm scared of power tools? For the record, I'm very much a beginner. I'm scared of power tools. <laughs> just start with like a small incremental goal, cut a piece of wood. That's it, that's enough. Once you do it, you'll see it's really not that scary. Also, always wear eye protection, always. Eyes is important. Do your first project, if you can, with someone supervising you who you trust, who has experience. You can also watch tutorials on YouTube of how to use it. Read the instruction manual. What's the phrase, cover to cover? Front to back, whatever it is. I read it, it's a bummer, but it's actually not as dense as it looks. You learn the parts of the machine, most importantly, the safety instructions. You're gonna be so much more confident using the tool. Another thing you can do is always to use wood stain instead of paint. Rub it on the wood with a cloth, Somehow I didn't get that on camera. Wipe off any excess with the cloth, let them dry. 
I attached all the boards with wood glue. If you're using thicker boards than I am, then you'll probably wanna use wood glue and secure it with the nail gun. Now I took the same pieces of wood and used them to make a little frame. You can attach them just at a complete right angle or you can cut that 45 degree angle, which is called a mitered edge, to make them come together in a little more sophisticated way. I painted them black with this paint that looks blue, but it dries black. Colors be crazy. Then I attach the frame using wood glue and a nail gun. Wood glue is like the most powerful substance on earth. It's the glue that's gonna hold this together. The nails are more so to just hold the board there while the glue dries. Here we go. Here's my little piece of wood. The only tool I'm gonna use here is a hand saw. Anyone can do it, it's super easy. I'm using plywood. I got this at my local hardware store. If you wanna do a smaller one, you can ask them to cut it down. They'll cut it down for you. Now, of course, you can draw your pattern beforehand, do a couple experiments. I'm kind of just gonna freehand it and see how it turns out. This is a miter box. It helps you do miter cuts at a 45 degree angle, etc. There's also a 90 degree angle. Put a piece of wood in there, kind of clamp it down or hold it down with your hand, and you get a 45 degree cut. It's awesome. I'm gonna use these kind of square dowels instead of a whole plank, because these dowels are way easier to cut through and it'll take you less time if you're gonna use a handsaw. I just attached with glue and I just put a dumbbell on top to hold it down. You could use a book, you could use any heavy object just to make sure it kind of sticks and attaches. Next question. If you were God, what are the annoying things you would send people to hell for doing? Easy, engaging me in small talk, not interested. Talk to me about your deepest fear, your greatest failure, or your hopes and dreams, I'm there. Also, people who walk too slowly on a busy street. Get out of here, get out of my way. I don't have time for this. Some of the wood glue will kind of seep out and I just used a towel or a paintbrush to get in those little cracks and wipe that out. So you can see here I'm using spare dowels as spacers just to make sure that you have that even spacing. Next question. Can someone with ADD handle a project like this? Yes, for sure. ADD can actually really serve you. My day job is working as a web designer and coder, like computers coding, this is me coding. One of the very first things that you learn in coding is the importance of taking breaks. There's no such thing as walking into work and all the code is working perfectly. There are always new problems and they can often be very frustrating. And the best thing you can do when you're stuck on a problem is to walk away, go for a run, go watch something you like on TV. You will do some subconscious processing in which your mind is able to actually look at the problem in a new way. It feels counterintuitive. It's kind of hard to do. You feel like I need to double down on this project. I'm messing up this table. I can't figure out how to do it. Why is this coming out wrong? Just figure it out now. It doesn't serve you. All that means is that I get exhausted, I get frustrated, and I start sacrificing quality because I just want to be done with the project. Not great. The best thing you can do, lean into your ADD, take breaks, do it in pieces. The end. So yes, you can definitely do it. Here I'm not mitering the edges and it still makes a nice frame. In place of using a nail gun, I just took some heavy paint cans and pressed them up against the side of the art piece and it came out beautifully. I love it. I left a lot of negative space on this piece, but you can also fill up the whole thing. Now, if you're dying to do a little wood art project, but you don't want to use a saw, even a hand saw, nothing, you can still do that. You can buy these little wood pieces at an art supply store, craft supply store. I got these from Amazon. There's a store I found on Amazon that sells these diamond pieces, hexagon pieces, whatever. I would say if you get a bunch of different pieces, just make sure the lengths of the sides are going to fit together in an easy way. And here I'm using this smaller piece of plywood just to give you an example. But if you do this on a huge piece of canvas, it would be beautiful, it'd be stunning. So you can experiment with a couple different layouts. Next question, what's the most versatile slash useful saw you have? Great question. Hmm, it kind of depends. You wanna do woodworking for like a lot of crafts and handmade objects and gift type thing? Then I would say a jigsaw. You can just freeform cut any shape you want. Next question, what are Marty's weirdest habits? He eats the wall. Puppies eat everything, but I mean, I don't know what to say about the wall. 
Thank you so much. Wow. There's a lot. There's pieces of our wall that are missing. On this, I'm just using a wood stain. You rub it on with the cloth. And then I kind of changed my mind, decided I wanted these layers to be white, so I painted that. Next question. I want a DIY on that console. Not a question, but I can deliver on this. If you haven't seen it in my bedroom makeover, I made from scratch a kind of modern console table. It was pretty cool and it was also pretty easy. I think I am gonna make a tutorial on this, so stay tuned. After the fact, I decided that I also wanted to stain the base piece of plywood. So I did it after the fact, but you could also do it beforehand if you're a better planner than I am. So that's it, wood art three ways. Please let me know which piece do you like the most and um, what's one of your biggest pet peeves? Let me know. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe. You click the button, I give you a video. What a system. Also, I know there's lots of people who watch these videos who know way more about woodworking than I do. Let me know what you would do differently, how I can improve. Share the wealth of knowledge. It's the internet, baby. We gotta share. That's kind of all I got to say. Bye-bye.